I don't know. But um, but anyway, let's have a look at my nuts then. Okay, let's do it. Envy is how every commie gets started. This is just the latest attempt by the left to gaslight everyone. <laughs> I wouldn't even rate that. A few days ago, Carl Benjamin, Sargon of Akkad, made a response to my video titled The Nutpicking Fallacy, in which I used him as an example. And as a result, my video died. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Throughout, Carl expressed many points which I find fair, but I find those that he made regarding the nutpicking fallacy itself really quite off. Now, I personally think that the best way for us to move forward is to have a face-to-face -face conversation, and after talking with his secretary, I'm pleased to say that we've arranged to do exactly this. We're recording on the 14th, and I'm sure the conversation will be published shortly after. However, I do still think it's worth me responding in my typical format, as it lends itself very well to precision and clarification. In a nutshell, I want you all to really understand my criticism before you watch us have a debate. So here's how I'm going to approach this. I'll begin by shortly clarifying the nutpicking fallacy itself, then I'll do my best to steal man and confront Carl's objection, and then finally, I'll address his less related points. With that, let's get on with it. And uh, thanks for joining me. And I'm not a communist. <laughs> Um, so the video is called the nut picking fallacy and essentially um, what he's uh, I don't know why he's renamed the fallacy of composition I haven't the fallacy of composition is similar to the fallacy of nut picking and for this reason it's easy to confuse the two but as Alex O'Connor commented they are distinct the former occurs when one infers that something is true of a whole from the fact that it is true of some part of the whole for example this brick is loose therefore the wall itself is loose Whereas the fallacy of nut picking occurs when one presents a non-typical proponent position or argument as if it or they are typical. For example, this brick is loose, which is typical of bricks in this wall. This is a fallacy, of course, because most bricks in this wall are not loose. Or put another way, the fallacy of composition assigns a property of a part to the whole, while the fallacy of nut picking assigns a property of a part to most other parts. So yeah, these fallacies are similar, but they are importantly distinct. Okay. With that covered, let's get to the main meal, your objection. I'm going to address this in two parts, because I believe that some of your nuts have important attributes that some of your other nuts don't. Let's have a look at my nuts then. In the left wing, Doomungs are wrong. Uh, Lily Allen, famous, politi uh, famous pop star, very politically engaged, in the news regularly, um, has lots of influence on social media. I didn't just find some random nut on the street, did I? I didn't find some bedroom feminist or something. You know, this is a person with influence, with status. Michael Moore, all white people are evil. Well, again, he's an influential filmmaker. He's, a, again, an influential voice on the left. So Carl's objection seems to be that his nuts are not just some random people off the street. I didn't just find some random nut on the street, did I? But rather, they are politically engaged, famous people with a large status and a lot of influence. Famous pop star, very politically engaged, in the news regularly. Well, again, he's an influential filmmaker. He's, a, again, an influential voice on the left. And I, of course, 100% accept this. Lily Allen and Michael Moore are not just some nuts off the street. They are very famous people. We can call them, if you will, elite nuts. But here's the crux. In regards to the fallacy of nut picking, the fact that these nuts are famous and influential is irrelevant. If you're criticising one of their views, if it wasn't these Muslim guys, someone would have raped these women, all white people are evil. And that view is not typically held by the group to which they belong. If you then assert that it is, the left has gone mental, you are committing a fallacy of nut picking. Their fame and influence is irrelevant. To put this in context of the former example, Lily Allen is a loose brick in the wall that is the left, but the fact that she's famous, say because she's a different colour or whatever, is absolutely irrelevant. It's still fallacious to assert that her property of being unstable is typical of bricks that comprise the left. Or to give a counterexample, Paula White, the chair of the Evangelical Advisory Board for Donald Trump, is extremely influential, but it would be fallacious to assert that her speaking in tongues and exploiting vulnerable people is typical of Christians, let alone the whole right. 
sakatara, baka sakatara. You need to send in that $100,000 check. If you do not write that P.O. box and you do not call that toll-free number and you do not become a ministry of sustainer, you will never see sustainment in your life and your dream will die, your call will die. Thank you, Paula. What a great job you do, the evangelicals. I hear we're more popular than ever with the evangelicals. You're the only one, and she'll tell the truth. She'll only tell the truth. Hence, Carl, you are guilty of nut picking. The typical brick in the left is not loose. Most left-leaning people do not think that white people are evil. So let's now move on to your stronger examples. The elected councillors in Perth condemning the it's okay to be white signs. Jeremy Corbyn saying he won the argument, which, I mean, he is the leader of the opposition. If I recall correctly, he won the Labour leadership with 62% of the votes as well. So I think that you can say that Jeremy Corbyn is representative of the Labour Party, and if people are voting for the Labour Party, then they must be voting for Jeremy Corbyn to represent them, surely. The key difference between Allen and Corbyn, of course, is that unlike the former, the latter is an elected representative. Both have the attributes of fame and influence, but crucially, Corbyn also has the attribute of holding office. I don't think you can consider this, like, just some rando that I've dug up from nowhere, you know, no one's ever heard of, and that I'm saying, look, he represents this group. And I 100% agree. Jeremy Corbyn is not only an elite nut, but is the leader of the Labour Party, a party which has been, for most of its existence, a staple of the left. But as you've said yourself many times over, Carl, Labour is not the only left-leaning party in the UK. The, Brit the, Tor the Conservative Party in Britain are wet, practically. Like they're practically socialists by American standards. Bernie would be thrilled. Indeed, despite protestations to the contrary, the Conservatives are also on the left. In fact, I'm sure you'd agree with me when I say that most people in the UK are on the left. Given this, let me get back to your comment. I think that you can say that Jeremy Corbyn is representative of the Labour Party. Yes, I too think that one can say that Corbyn is representative of the Labour Party. One could even argue that he's a strong or even really strong representative of the Labour Party. But his delusion of Labour winning the argument... We won the argument. We won this. I mean, how can you say that? ...is not typical of the left. Don't you see, Carl? If you define Corbyn's delusion as the left, you are implicitly defining everyone who isn't deluded as not the left. You are helping spread the toxic narrative that only the most woke people are left. You are reinforcing the left pole. You are helping our enemies. But let's assume, for the sake of argument, which is to say that I know that this isn't your view, that Corbyn was not only the leader of the Labour Party, but was the leader of the entire left. Let's assume that we had a world government, that absolutely everyone either sided left or right, and that Corbyn led the left. How would this impact the fallacy of nut picking? It wouldn't. The fact that a nut holds office is, like fame and influence, irrelevant. If a nut holds a view that's not typical of the group that they lead, and you assert that it is by virtue of them being the leader, you are still committing the fallacy of nut picking. To again use the analogy of the wall, Corbyn might be the top brick of the now shattered wall of Labour, and he might even be a top brick in the much larger wall that is the left. But the fact that he's the top brick doesn't somehow make it less fallacious to conflate his non-typical attributes with the bricks to which he sits upon. Corbyn might have the deluded view that he won the argument, but it's not typical of people on the left to have this delusion. Or to once again give a counterexample, Donald Trump is a Presbyterian, but that doesn't mean that most members of the Republican Party are Presbyterian, let alone that the right is typically Presbyterian. Trump is famous, famous, has a lot of influence on social media, has lots of influence on social media, is very politically engaged, very politically engaged, is in the news regularly, in the news regularly, and he was elected, the elected, and yet, it's still fallacious to assert that his attribute of being a Presbyterian is typical of individuals on the right. It's got nothing to do with fame, influence, or office. It has everything to do with whether the proposition is typical. So even with your stronger examples, you are still guilty of nutpicking, Carl. Okay, with the main objection aside, I'd like to move on to the example that you made of me. I mean, let's have a look at your own videos. You were denounced by the atheist community of Austin because you had had a very calm and reasonable and charitable uh, one video, one single video, talking about transgenderism. So I just want to interject here to simply say that yes, it was just one video, but it certainly wasn't charitable. It was, in fact, sloppy. I failed to even mention the effects of HRT, and so I absolutely deserve to be called out. 
which is to say, it's not as Carl was painting here. I wasn't attacked simply for making a video in which I disagreed with the SJW narrative. One single video talking about transgenderism that apparently conflicts with the SJW narrative on transgenderism. You are not as pro-transgender as the board of the atheist community of Austin would have you, and so they have literally, as you say, um, thrown you under the bus with a full denouncement that left you feeling crushed. Why is it the board of directors doing it if it's just random nuts who are not representative of anything? Are the board of directors not representative of the atheist community of Austin? Why, where are the people backing you up? Why aren't people saying, no, the atheist community of Austin is wrong and they need to, they, the, the directors need to change their ways or be replaced or something like that? I don't know. But Carl, that is precisely what happened. I received a gargantuan amount of support. In fact, I received more support than I have ever experienced for anything, ever. Hundreds of people copied me into their email complaints to the ACA. Their video like to dislike ratio absolutely plummeted. The comments on their videos expressed deep disdain for their denouncement. Tons of community members made videos condemning their actions, and people slammed their Facebook group so bad that they had to temporarily shut it down. And as a result, they did precisely what you've just suggested. They retracted their statement, apologised to me both publicly and privately, and the regressors on their board did not get re-elected. And to top it all off, the president of the ACA, Jamie Boone, quit weeks later. Kerfuffle. And just as a little side note for everyone watching, know that Jamie is actually a really nice guy. He just got caught up. He got unlucky like many people that got caught up. Now if I may ask Carl, what more evidence do you need? The almost entirely left-wing ACA made a resounding statement in opposition to the regressive narrative. They back me and not the now ex-board of directors. And finally, I just want to clear up some of your misconceptions. Then you have his argument with Essence of Thought, who's you know a radical SJW YouTuber, uh, and he calls out the bullying of Essence of Thought and the group of which he's a member, but he has now come around to their position, I think. Right, let me be as clear as I can. Me and Essence of Thought do not share the same view on transgender athletics. He believes that if you, Carl, for example, were to simply identify as a woman, then you should be able to compete in a protected category designed for typical 46 XX women, with no other qualifiers needed. I, on the other hand, do not hold a view anything akin to that. But that's the radical left-wing position, is the Olympic official position. Is that not representative of something? How are they not representative of something? Like, they are the ones calling the shots. Essence of Thought agrees with the Olympic Committee. Again, no. The Olympics does not share the same view as Essence of Thought. Unlike the latter, who insists on identity alone being the qualifier, the Olympics insists that anyone seeking to compete in the women's category must prove that they've had, for 12 months, less than 10 nanomoles of testosterone per litre. What's more, Thanks to scientists such as Joanna Harper, who is a trans woman and athlete herself, they are looking to decrease the limit to just under 5 nanomoles per litre. And so, again, the Olympics is yet another good case of the radical left losing ground because the wider left, such as people like myself, are calling them out. The left said no to Corbyn, no to the ex-ACA board of directors, and no to making identity the sole qualifier to athletic categories. The left is speaking, Carl. But are you listening? And I wish, like, him and David Pakman, I think, David Pakman does this all the time. He's like, well, I, I, I don't think this radical fringe represents the, the Democrat Party or the, the left-wing movement or anything like that. It's like, yeah, but it is everywhere. And it is your biggest and brightest figures. Yes, I agree. There is a big problem with so many left-wing leaders holding, quite frankly, absurd ideas, just as there is a big problem with so many right-wing leaders holding so many absurd ideas. These days, everyone's group's biggest and brightest figures seem utterly preposterous. However, and again, if the group to which they belong, or the group to which they lead, does not typically share one or more of their preposterous views, then it is a fallacy to assert that they do. This is why David Pakman is correct to say that their fringe views are not typical of the left. Lily Allen's misandry, Michael Moore's racism, and Corbyn's delusions are not typical of left-leaning individuals, and so it is a fallacy to assert that it is. The left, the left, the left, the left, has not one credible voice left. To wrap up, I just want to convey that the reason that I used you as an example of nutpicking, Carl, other than the fact that you do it regularly, is because I actually share a lot of your views, and it frustrates me to see your otherwise great points so easily dismissed due to your generalizations. Anyhow, 
I hope that you've all found this entertaining or better yet compelling. And the same goes to you, Carl. I thoroughly look forward to our chat. But please, please, if you bring in us, at least cover them up. <laughs>